it seems like not a single international organization can restrain Russia from what it's doing currently. The information war in Russia. Hella Rottenberg, a journalist and writer working for the Knowledge Center Windows on Russia. You uh, are currently very much working on the situation and know what's going on. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the situation in Russia in terms of the information war? So basically, there are large parts of the country that have really no idea about what's really going on, is how we're interpreting it in the West. In your own words, how do you see the situation? Many outlets have been uh, shut down, have been uh, forbidden, like the TV station online Dost, like the radio station Echo Moskvi, which was listened to very broadly. Um, other outlets uh, which uh, were uh, critical uh, on the, 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 the Kremlin policy. And um, what has re remained uh, are uh, several... Uh, one newspaper, in fact, Novaya Gazeta, led by the uh, Nobel uh, laureate uh, Muratov. And, um, well, there are several, there is a, a newspaper which, a uh, commerçant newspaper, which is a business newspaper, in fact, which is really very admirably trying to give some neutral, objective information. Right. And for the rest, the television is uh, a, a propaganda outlet. It always has been, but now the state television is in fact has a monopoly yeah. on uh, allowed information I in Russia. And uh, I, probably you have seen it as well and noticed that uh, one editor of the uh, first channel, the Russian channel, uh, came... Uh, forward behind suddenly behind the anchor woman and held a, a protest a paper with a protest saying they are lying here to you don't believe it it's all propaganda thank you for that um, we are also joined here by a uh, lawyer from Human Rights Center Memorial. Um, currently, Tamila Imanova, you are based in Moscow. Uh, with you and your colleagues, what's going on? What's the situation on the ground in terms of the discussion here about the information war? Um, Memorial is one of those organizations that have been uh, that the, that the authorities were trying to silence from long time ago. Uh, first, it was the law on the foreign agents, and since November 2021, we were in the judicial process of liquidation. So, um, there are, our organization is under the process, process of being liquidated, and uh, it's going to be finalized in April, as we, as we know from the court schedule. Now, it is clear why Memorial it was shut down and some of the members are being uh, either administratively or criminally prosecuted. So, there is... Um, two weeks ago, we had a search organized by police uh, because of a criminal case being initiated against one of our members. and. Our internal policy is now to, mm, well, not to say the words that are forbidden, so to say, as pre the previous speaker mentioned. So we're, we're trying to tell the truth as well as other medias do. I myself work in the ECHR program, that is a program of European Court of Human Rights. And on, on, uh, on this angle, the news are absolutely the saddest. Russia has just been excluded from the Council of Europe uh, involuntarily by the Committee of Ministers. It happened around 30 minutes ago, which means that starting from today, uh, not a single person, be that a Russian or a Ukrainian or uh, a person of other citizenship, cannot complain against Russia to the European Court of Human Rights, even if the person's rights were gravely violated. The only violations the court can work with now are the ones that occurred before today. So I'm hoping that the court will be accepting the war applications. Yes, I just said that. Hopefully I'm not gonna get prosecuted for that. Um, so that's what's happening on the international law angle. 
At the same time, there are, going, there, there are proceedings against Russia in the International Criminal Court, in the International Court of Justice, which we are also following. We are expecting provisional measures to be instituted against Russia by the International Court of Justice. But it seems like not a single international organization can restrain Russia from what it's doing currently. Uh, Russia just goes wild. Just because thank you for allowing us to get an insight into what it's like on the ground. I just want to bring it back to the this whole idea of information war or this big yeah. word that keeps being thrown around. But what it boils down to is at least a lot of people in the West, we don't we, we cannot wrap our heads around the fact that people in Russia, a lot of people remain uninformed and a lot of people just don't really know what's going on. There was a quote in Window on Russia where, where you work, um, an article there that basically from a girl, a Russian girl living in Ukraine reporting to her family saying, quote unquote, for my family, it's my word versus the television's word and the television is winning. Um, so you've just touched on how extremely difficult and it is you know, to get the truth out there um, and the continuing restrictions as we speak. Uh, do you see this happening and continuing to happen? What's the long term perspective in your opinion? Yes, it is happening. And unfortunately, it seems to be happening in every single regular family. I myself encountered people who just cannot get over this barrier where they where their mind just makes them believe into what the official sources are saying and every single official source is stating this government's propaganda line except that one brave uh, editor that uh, you mentioned who had her 10 seconds of speaking truth from the official channel but obviously what the what the other media are doing now is uh, are they are stating that she was paid that there is a huge mass of foreign agents, uh, fifth column people, that is a term for people who are being paid from abroad to somehow destroy Russia and its morals and its values. So every single person who is trying to speak the, uh, the opposite position, that every single person will be labeled as a, a traitor, as a um, person who sold themselves, a Judas maybe, uh, and that's how, that's how they stated. And people who've been watching the state TV and reading the state media for, for decades, they just accept it because it's probably the easiest version to accept. Yeah. They've, they've been having their regular life, watching their first three channels at TV and reading their newspapers. And now they're seeing that this huge thing is happening because whatever the version is, there is an international uh, conflict armed conflict, which everyone understands. And everyone feels sorry for people who are dying. But the easiest version, well, it is easy to accept. And it's easy to, it's easy to accept that people who are trying to read more, who are trying to read international sources, independent sources, they're just buying into the West's propaganda, so to say. Right. Thank you. Hella, do you think that Russia, and based on everything Tamil has just said, Russia is losing the information war and Ukraine is winning the information war? Do, or does it depend on from which perspective we're looking at it? From? I think it's, it, it depends from the mm. perspective. In our idea, Ukraine internationally uh, easily wins the, the propaganda war if you uh, or the information war. And uh, Russia is losing it. But, uh, well, looking from Russia, where uh, the majority of the population still buys into the, the narrative of the, the Russian uh, state, right. uh, we don't know how it will work out in, in, in the long term. I, I guess uh, also uh, the, the, the bursts will appear in the Russian propaganda as soldiers come home or uh, uh, soldiers who died are sent home, yeah. word will spread about what is going on in Ukraine in reality. Right. So you're, yeah, that's, you're touching on something uh, very, the, the core part of this whole story. Um, okay, how do you see, what, what, what can we do in the West? What can people in Russia do for, for now to get access to reliable information, to keep that flow of reliable information alive? This is a question to both of you. Let's start with you. Well, to start with, many outlets 
have now fled abroad. Um, uh, Western outlets as well, like the Russian services of the BBC and Radio Liberty and uh, the, the German Deutsche Welle, uh, they have stopped their activities inside Russia, but they continue their activities from abroad. And uh, also other outlets like Media Zona and uh, Medusa uh, are, are working from uh, Vilnius or other places where they fled to. Mm. And you can still, although they are blocked in Russia, you can still access them through this virtual private network uh, program, this VPN, if you install it on your telephone or your computer. Uh, and many people do. Uh, there's a surge in uh, downloading these programs now in Russia. Um, uh, also, some outlets uh, spread their news through newsletters. Uh, the BBC has reinstalled uh, their uh, broadcasting through shortwave, which they stopped after the, the Cold War and the Iron Curtain was uh, uh, finished, mm. but now they reinstall this uh, th this uh, possibility. So there are many possibilities still, if you w really want. But then that's only a small part now still of the population, as far as I understand it. Yeah, Tamela, is there anything you would like to add to this? Uh, I would want to mention that there are anti-war movements starting basically on the internet and mainly led from abroad because it's just by, by Russians, because it's simply not uh, um, safe to uh, lead and post uh, things like that from, from being inside Russia. So these anti-war protests speak a lot about the necessity to uh, talk to each and every person through different methods. So talk to your family members, uh, bringing them uh, news, like breaking apart their beliefs about fakes and what and whatnot. Talking to them through the language of emotions, like uh, about uh, those crying mothers whose sons were sent to the to the war without the, uh, their knowing. Uh, other methods are sp spreading um, paper leaflets at the. Um, uh, apartments, um, mailboxes, r uh, making writings on the streets, a pavement, like in chalk or something else. Uh, so, we, we, of course, we do know that protests are being hugely shut down, but there, there are other methods of speaking out publicly, such as I just told you, and th th those are still not yet monitored that closely. So maybe people who want to help can resort to that. People who know the truth and are still staying in Russia. Tamila, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Hela, thank you very much as well. This is Studio Free Press Matters. See you next time.